The other question that was swirling around for so long, and we've all heard this, even on our own, own air, is how did he get on that rooftop? We know he purchased a five-foot ladder that morning, Saturday, at 9 a.m. at Home Depot near his house. That ladder has never been found to date. But uh, the investigation has developed that he climbed up onto an air conditioner handler, and you can see that they're all around these buildings, and then hoisted himself onto a very low roof that's in the center of that complex, almost kind of in a courtyard, which would have been away from the view of a lot of people. Before that, and this is interesting, he had already attracted the attention of security people at the screening area for the rally. He had been walking by the magnetometers with a rangefinder in his hand. Now, a rangefinder is something that shooters use to measure the distance in long shots. Golfers use them too. Looks like a small pair of binoculars, but if you're a police officer or someone who knows about firearms, uh, you'll know what that is when you see it. He was carrying it in his hand and kind of circling around the mag area. Hey guys, my name is Devory Darkens. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're following up again on this failed ass assassination attempt on Donald Trump, okay? And all of the questions that have come to light, some of the inaccuracies, some of the questionable information, and it, it actually leaves people with more questions than answers. And so what I want to do in this video today is catch you all up on everything that we know up to this point and what we don't know and kind of go from there and and see what your mindset is about all this because as time goes on this is getting a little crazy right and i think this is a particular situation where if someone starts sharing conspiracies with you i wouldn't be too quick to shut them down because conspiracies are born from what when they're not being honest with us. They're not giving us the information. The, the math is not adding up. And although they can always say, well, for national security reasons, we're not gonna tell you guys every little thing, fine. But tell us something that makes sense, right? And so before I go any further, you guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. And let's actually get into this uh, story here. So one of the first things I wanna bring up, and we're just gonna go back to the very beginning and we're focusing more on uh, really two things uh, when it comes to this video today. We're focusing on the shooter and then we're focusing on the Secret Service, okay? And because if we focus on those two things, um, we could start to see that things are not adding up whatsoever. So in that first clip that I had played you guys, he was going through the actual timeline of the shooter. When you said that local law enforcement was responsible for that building, what did you mean by that? So Secret Service respects lo local law enforcement and we could not do our job either investigatively or on our protective mission without them. Uh, in Pennsylvania, in fact, on that same day, they were also working uh, the First Lady trip uh, and a vice presidential trip. So I, I understand the constraints that they're under and, and as I said earlier, we couldn't do our job without them the design and the implementation and the execution of the site. And that's what I was trying to stress was that we just divided up areas of responsibility and they provided support to those areas of responsibility. And you mentioned the first lady. Well, clearly they did not because if they did provide support, they would have apprehended him. They would have prevented him from getting on the roof, you know, and, and this is the type of gaslighting that no longer works in America. And this is where we're actually at. I, I actually do give credit Maybe it's social media. Maybe we just as a collective, we're just getting tired of it, which is stop lying. OK, we're not stupid anymore. There's been so many scandals, so many documentaries, so many secrets uncovered where the government, these agencies are just blatantly lying to us. And there's no real reason to do that. But the only reason which we'll get into later in this video, it's all for political reasons, meaning the Secret Service, the FBI, the CIA, all these three-letter agencies, they're no longer operating from a place of being unbiased, impartial, and sticking to their standing operating procedures. What they are doing is they're being governed by politics. So obviously the Secret Service director was not appointed by Donald Trump. She was appointed by President Biden. She was a Secret Service agent on the detail when he was vice president. So there's loyalty there. Right. And so she's not going to come out 
and insinuate anything that could be damaging to him. And so this is why her responses are what they are to include that she's not going to throw her agents under the bus either. So we have two things working against us as the public when we're looking for answers. We already have the inherent bias. I'm not going to throw my team under the bus. Right. And then two, I'm definitely not going to throw the people who have been loyal to me that made me the Secret Service director under the bus either. So this is more of a political situation than it is an actual investigation. That's just my opinion about it. But let's keep hearing what she has to say. Um, also, Ben Pittsburgh, you guys have a lot of areas to cover. Were any assets diverted from the former president's rally to her detail? No, there were no assets mm. from the Secret Service that were diverted at all. Okay, so no one swapped out any of the posts, for example? No. Okay. CNN, of course, has reporting that the Secret Service increased security for former President Trump because of a credible threat from Iran. Um, I, you know, I've spoken with several people who look at the perimeter, hearing that news, look at the perimeter and say, how, knowing that there was a credible threat against the former president, how could that perimeter be uh, so small that it excluded a building just 150 yards away from the podium? I can't get into the specifics of, of any threats, uh, but obviously with all of our protectees, we're constantly monitoring the threats that are out bull. there and we design our security plan based on... That's bull. That's... See? That's what I'm saying. And then they wonder why the public does not trust them. She didn't even deny that the Iran security plot to assassinate Trump was a real thing or a fake thing. She just totally bypassed that, right? And gave the PR response. And now, uh, just read the room, right? The room right now is saying, we are so divisive. Political violence is increasing. Don't you think by just being honest, that would actually temper things? But by gaslighting and giving us this robotic response, it just makes people even more angrier. I mean, that's what's really happening here. Uh, also, depending on the venue and the environment that we're in. And on that particular day, uh, a full advance had been completed. But this is also why we are doing an internal review. And we look forward to the external review uh, as well. And, and obviously, if uh, you know there are things that we need to change about our policies or our procedures or our methods, we are certainly going to do so. Was if there are things, definitely there are things you need to change. The results tell the story. Your whole per The whole purpose of the Secret Service is to prevent this. So when it's not prevented, that means it's a catastrophic failure of everything. How they work, how they operate, the culture. Because the whole thing is designed to prevent this, not to respond to this. That's not what they're designed for, which is why the FBI is handling it now, right? The FBI's job is to not only prevent, but also handle cases like this when someone uh, is going to be or was a, an assassination uh, a attempt had taken place or was successful. The FBI will take the lead on that. Uh, so anyways, the point is Secret Service, it, it, this is your whole mission in life is to prevent this. So it's not a, it's not an if, it, it is. You, you have a breakdown. Perimeter too small. The perimeter encompassed the area that we needed to secure for the event uh, that, that, that we had on that day. What happened is a terrible incident and should never. Again, bull. Let me let me rewind this so you guys can hear clearly hear this question that she's asked. Policies or our procedures or our methods, we are certainly going to do so. Was that perimeter too small? The perimeter encompassed the area that we needed to secure for the event uh, that, that apparently we had not on that day. What uh, apparently that's not the perimeter that needs to be secure. Apparently, you guys should have made a bigger perimeter and secured that. I mean, again, this is peak delusion, peak gaslighting, peak politics, and that's why nobody trusts a word that's coming out of her mouth. Is a terrible incident and should never happen. And we are obviously going to make sure that moving forward, we take whatever lessons we that come out of this and adjust accordingly. Was every element? Every part of his, from the intelligence to the counter assault team, to the detail agents, to the shift agents, I mean, every element top to bottom of the advance in the operation, was every element increased after you learned of this credible threat? What we increased was what we felt was appropriate for the former president and for that particular event on that day. We have been increasing the assets and the resources. Translation is, yeah, we are now having to actually do our job effectively in the way that we should have already been doing it. Now that all this attention is on us and the news has caught wind and everybody's talking about these threats. That's what she's saying, basically. Right. Because, again, 
their mission in life is not to respond to a threat, it's to prevent one in the first place. And so obviously hearing her speak about this just leaves you with more questions because there's no responsibility being taken. There's no willingness to say, hey, you know what, here's where we messed up, here's where it was compromised. And so it's not providing the clarity that we would expect from the person who's in charge. And she acknowledges that she's in charge. Let's take a look at that. What was your reaction when you saw the events unfold on Saturday? Shock uh, and then concern, obviously, uh, for the former president. This is an event that should have never happened. Who is most responsible for this happening? What I would say is that the Secret Service is responsible for the protection of the former president. So the buck stops with you? The buck stops with me. I am the director of the Secret Service. It was unacceptable, and it's something that shouldn't happen again. The president and Homeland Security Secretary said today they had 100 percent confidence in you, but there are some members of Congress calling on you to resign. I appreciate the secretary's comments, and we're going to continue to be transparent uh, and communicate with people. You plan to stay on, absolutely. I do plan to stay on. Yeah, she plans to stay on because the only person that can actually fire her is the president. He's the one that put her there. Right. And he's not going to fire her under his administration. He he appointed her in his administration. So, of course, she's not going anywhere. Right. Unless some scandal comes out and it's just as clear as day that there was corruption and a gross negligence. She's not going anywhere. Now, let's actually take another look at this other story that has been developing. So especially for my conspiracy theorist junkies out there, you're going to love this. And this just makes you think how interesting these events really are when you look at all of the facts. So let me read this to you guys. Someone or a group of individuals shorted millions of shares in Trump true social stock in the week leading up to his assassination attempt. Uh, short positions against True social stock doubled between July 1st and July 12th, going from 7 to 15 million shares. Now, if you don't really understand what it means to short a stock, it means you're betting against it, meaning you're betting on the fact that it will fail, it will drop, right? And so uh, you're, you're going in there saying, I believe that in the next week, this stock is going to basically, you know, drop by so many points or, you know, the, the price of this stock is going to, you know, go down. And so I'm placing my money on that to actually happen. And so uh, they are saying a similar occurrence was observed on September 11, 2001, when substantial bets were placed against the stocks of major airlines the day before the attacks. Something similar also happened before the terrorist attacks in Israel on October 7th of last year, when bets against the value of Israeli companies spiked in the days prior, suggesting some traders may have had advanced knowledge of the looming terror attack and profited from it. They anticipated that Trump would be dead by Monday morning and tried to profit from that scenario. Follow the money. Now, this is, uh, you know, available information. You could go on uh, the Internet and find that information um, and look at the actual stock numbers. So the the, the bottom line here in, in so far is we have what? We have um, someone who's 20 years old, for some reason has the experience and the knowledge and the skills to um, get a accurate round off towards the president. Uh, we have a lapse in communication or security between the Secret Service and the local police department. Now, is it the local PD's fault? Is it the security or the Secret Service fault? It's definitely the Secret Service because anything that has to do with uh, a elected official who's assigned Secret Service, it's their responsibility ultimately. So to blame the local PD is ridiculous in my opinion. Ultimately, it's on the Secret Service because here's the thing, and we used to actually do this in, in the military, is there's always a, so it's called recon in the military. You send someone out previous to the mission taking place and to scope the area, right, to identify certain vulnerabilities and et cetera, et cetera. You guys have probably already heard these things from other uh, snipers that went on CNN and gave their take on this. But here's my point about this, is that there's always like a checklist, okay? There's a walkthrough, there's a checklist, there's a pre-checklist, right? And then there's the active execution of the mission and people following up during the execution. So obviously, one thing's for sure that 
right before, like an hour or two hours before. Remember, they said he was there three hours pre prior to the president speaking. So even one hour before, you would you would think that they would be going down the checklist again and saying, all right, is this secure? Is this secure? Do we have someone on that building? What's going on over there? Like someone who's roaming and making sure these things are happening, right? And of course, that didn't happen. They also, there's also a story out there, and I'll play it for you right now, where it kind of just shows you what's really happening with the Secret Service. Let's take a look. This is from an unimpeachable source. I have a number of people feeding me information in the Secret Service. And Ben, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not defending or anybody, I'm not anybody's spokesperson. The agents I'm talking to, and there are many, are over, they are overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly saying the same thing. This is a colossal apocalyptic embarrassment to an agency I was proud of. There is no one, no one defending this thing. But one of them fed to me last night, and this, if this pans out to be true, and I have no reason to believe it isn't based on who told me this, that that was supposed to be a local police department counter sniper post. There were two USSS Secret Service counter sniper teams. That was supposed to be an additional one. Apparently, for some reason, I don't care to speculate on, it's not what I do, that post never showed up. Mm. Now, this is why you had in the beginning that statement, I don't know if you remember it, but it was from a few days ago, where the Secret Service spokesperson appeared to pawn the blame off on the locals. That's what that was about. Now, even if that is the case, which I believe it is based on my source, that say this post did not show up. Now, there, you know what happens when you lie, Ben? Again, you know, being a lawyer, you know how this is with clients. They forget their own lies. So first they tried to blame it on the local PD. And then when they got backlash on that, they said, oh, it was the slope of the roof. And now that they're getting backlash on that, they don't know what to do. They don't want to tell the truth that they just never checked the post that he showed up and the post didn't. So now they're burying themselves. So yeah. And th that's what I was saying was, is that they would be better off just being honest and just telling us what it is than to keep making up reasons why they couldn't do their job. And the more they keep acting like they couldn't do their job, the more questions people are going to ask and the more it's going to lead to conspiracies and call it whatever you want. The bottom line is <clears throat> this is what happens when you're not providing the clarity that you should have. Now, one more thing we need to cover, because I'm telling you, things keep happening. Let's check out this interview with the Iranian foreign minister. My first question to you is relating to the news that CNN has broken about information that the U.S. government received, uh, the National Security Council then passed on to the Secret Service of a plot, an Iranian plot, to assassinate the former President Donald Trump in re retaliation for the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the senior Ira uh, Iranian general, uh, that happened during the Trump administration. Now, if you guys don't remember this, there's history here. So when Trump was the president, he assassinated one of Iran's generals, right? And since then, Iran's been claiming they wanted to hold anybody responsible that who contributed to this successful uh, killing of their general. And of course, that would mean holding Donald Trump accountable too. So there is intelligence, there has been reports that Iran wants to assassinate uh, Donald Trump, and they've yet to connect the shooter from Saturday with Iran, of course. Um, there's no connection whatsoever that's been reported, but it has started to um, shed more light on the threats against our President Donald Trump. So let, let's hear his amazing response. What can you tell us about this? Uh... As you know, the Islamic Republic of Iran, immediately following the assassination of General Soleimani, tried to judicially and legally follow these assassination at Iranian courts, and at the same time, we have tried to make use of the international judicial and legal procedures in order to prosecute the perpetrators 
and advisors who helped uh, these assassination. Accordingly, the Islamic Republic of Iran will make use of all legal potentials inside the country or at the international level in order to to bring the perpetrators to the justice. But that means not not violent measures. When you say legal and judicial measures, you are talking about international courts and things like that. As I told you, we will only resort to Iranian and international legal and uh, judicial procedures. Iranian judicial procedures, which includes violence. <laughs> That's pretty much what he's saying. We have done it, and this is our right, and of course we will continue it. And the Americans openly said that that they assassinated the, the senior Iranian military commander. So it, it is our natural right in order to follow this issue. And those who are accused in this case, they should be brought to justice in a, in a just court. Yeah, so there you go, right? I told you in this video that you would leave probably with more questions than answers. And so the story just keeps getting crazier and crazier as the time goes on. And it leads you in a place where you're like, I don't even know what to believe. But let's just know this. Let's just stick to the facts without even speculating or getting into con conspiracy theories, right? It is a fact that Iran definitely wants to assassinate Donald Trump. That is a fact. It is a fact that some 20-year-old, for some reason, has marksmanship skills and has enough technique and knowledge to uh, not only access this rally, he knew where to set up at the rally, and he brought the equipment needed to be successful on gauging the distance he was going to have to shoot. And he got pretty close, right? That is a fact. It is, it is also a fact that the security people were not there where they were supposed to be. That building was not secure. You do not secure a building from the inside. You secure the building on the outside because this is an outside rally. Um, that is also a fact. It is also a fact that the Secret Service director is not really being forthcoming. She is not being transparent and she's not being honest. She's given us the the PR political responses to these questions that we have. And it's also a fact that she is probably in a position where she has to be loyal to President Biden because he put her there. And if she is not loyal, she's going to lose her job. And she probably does not want to lose her job over something like this when Donald Trump is still alive. Now, if he if the assassination attempt was successful, then maybe we probably would have some whistleblowers and some people coming out of the woodwork really quickly here, but we don't. And that's where we are today. So this is my mindset about this story. I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about what's going on and everything that's taking place? Uh, leave your answers and more in the comment section below. And thank you so much for checking out the video today. We'll see you in the next one.